Greetings and welcome to another update to the Woodgrain 486. And this computer, ah, oh, it's still just my favorite thing recently. I, I love this computer. And I built this actually here on LGR a little while back for the seventh anniversary celebration of this show. You can click the annotation there to see it or just go into the video description and link, click there and you know, you can watch it there and catch up. In that video, I had a couple issues. I have uh, one sense I have resolved, which is a sound blaster being kind of strange. I added a Sound Blaster Pro 2.0 to this in another subsequent video, which is also linked in the description. Um, and aside from adding more wood grain, which I did right here, I also wanted to add cache to the computer. And in case you're not aware, L2 cache is what I'm talking about. And a lot of computers back then just didn't even have it built on board or it wouldn't, you know, it wasn't in the CPU or anything. You had L1 on the CPU, but it was something like, you know, eight kilobytes. And so if you wanted more, 128K, 256, 512, whatever, then you would need to actually physically install it onto the board. So that's what we're going to do today. I had some free slots. I was able to source some cache chips that are compatible. So uh, let's just go ahead and I want to look first at what the computer performed like before I've installed any cache. Uh, then we're going to install it and see what it does. Okay, so let's try out Top Bench here before any cache is installed. And this is a very handy little benchmarking program to maybe not do exactly what I want it to here. I'm not really sure how well this is gonna show the difference between the cache being installed and not, but I just wanted to use it because it's very easy to use and I like the way it looks and I like this real-time benchmarking thing. Gives it a score of about 152, 151, putting it in the range of like an IBM EduQuest 55 or a Toshiba Satellite 105 CS, which maybe means nothing to you, but I find that kind of fascinating. Yeah, anyway, this is just to get an idea of uh, kind of how the system is running without the cache. All right, so of course, Duke Nukem 3D was the game that uh, really kind of surprised me and how badly it ran before. And uh, well, I mean, you know, it's kind of a tough to run game anyway for certain 46 CPUs, but this one should be running it a little better than it was. So let me just uh, show you again what we were looking at without the cache. Okay, so yeah, as you can see there, it is, uh, I mean, single digit frame rates quite often and it's just, just pretty much unplayable. This is running in 320 by 200 and, you know, it's got some sound card stuff going on there, which of course that's going to make it run a little slower, I believe, but, you know, whatever. I, I shouldn't be running this abysmally slow. All right, so here's what we're gonna be working with. I got some chips sent to me from a Ukrainian eBay seller, and uh, yeah, Ukraine seems to be the best source for these, at least as far as getting them cheaply and reliably, believe it or not. Um, I've gotten quite a few things from some of these sellers over the past couple of years, and I've seen some others on like Alibaba and whatnot coming from China, but I seem to have better luck with these. And uh, this one actually came in this uh, delightful lotion package. <laughs> <laughs> Multi-balance something or other. Uh, we're not taking a look at lotion. Not today, anyway. But yeah, it's a handy little uh, thing to keep these protected during shipment. So let's just open these up. So each of these sets are supposed to be uh, 256 kilobytes total. These are sort of attached together like that, but we're going to split them apart. And there's going to be uh, two rows of four, as well as one tag chip off to the side, which I think my board has that. If not, then it's just an extra. But uh, yeah, you'll see that um, the model numbers for these two sets are actually slightly different. One is AH on the end, and one is just A. Uh, they're supposed to be the same specifications, but... You know, I don't know how well like these things hold up. I don't know which set's like working or I, I don't know. I just got a couple of them because they were $7 for each one of these sets and like very little as far as shipping. So uh, there's not a whole lot of risk on my end for just getting a couple of them and seeing what you got. This is just like knit together like a zipper. I have to get something to pry these apart. So here are a couple of them, uh, one of each type. Uh, I guess I'm going to try the AHs. All right, so we've got the wood grain 46 cover off, and uh, each one of these little guys is going to go right in here. 
And yes, you obviously should be doing this before you install the rest of the stuff when you're putting one of these computers together, but I didn't have the chips at that time, and uh, the other chips that were on some of those other boards that maybe I could have used, I just determined I didn't want to. I wanted a complete set of chips that were all the same. And uh, so yeah, they're gonna go in these two columns of uh, four rows, and then there's the uh, final one right underneath there. You can see right in the middle here, these are gonna be the, uh, that's telling me what jumper settings need to be set in order to tell the computer how much it has. So there's a setting for 256K. So there's a bit of give in the motherboard here. That's because there's uh, nothing really attaching it to the back of the case at this point. It's not a problem though, as far as I can tell, it's not bending enough to do any damage. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, of course, is the direction you're putting these in. And uh, if this thing will focus, you have that little circular part there. There's actually a little circular uh, area on where it goes in as well. So you just sort of line both circular areas up. So that is gonna be on the left-hand side on these here. <laughs> well, that's interesting. This has two, uh, well, four more pins on these. So, you know, I did not even notice the size difference until I got them in here. Well, live and learn. So from what I'm reading, the difference between a 32 pin and 28 pin of these cash chips is certainly not any kind of real big deal breaker. So you can actually take the 28 pins and just drop them into the 32 pin slot and just <laughs> leave a, a little bit of space on the left there. And <laughs> you know, it seems a little weird to me, but everyone online is saying it's gonna work. So uh, let's try it out, see what we got. And uh, at this point, the only thing left to do is get the jumper settings correct. And that's gonna be a huge pain because they're underneath a bunch of crap. Oh my goodness, this is the most tedious thing in the world. Oh! Please! Oh, oh man. Oh. Oh. Okay, that was the most annoying thing I've done in years. Those jumpers were just not even, holy crap. I thought it was these other jumpers that were near the CPU, but nope, they were underneath this metal thing. I would have had to take the whole computer apart to get to them. So I just did it tiny bit by tiny bit with a camera and flashlight and tweezers. I got that out of my system. Let's try this out. Okay, so I've got it booted up here. That's a good sign, I guess. I'm gonna check the BIOS settings for cache stuff, which should be in here. All right, here's some external cache. That's good. We're gonna enable that, and I'm gonna say right back is on. Okay, so I have this program called Cache Check here. This is version seven, and uh, it's checking things now to see if everything is okay. And let's hope it is, because after all that garbage with the jumper settings, I don't wanna mess with anything else anymore. Okay, so it says this machine has L1 and L2 cache, which is nice. Uh, 8K of L1, good grief, and L2 256K, which is what we want, and uh, you know, I don't know what else to look for here, but that seems good to me. Let's try uh, the other benchmarking thing again, top bench, and see what we get. Just if anything's different, I'm just curious. Holy crap, quite a bit, holy crap! So the score it's, it gives us now is 200, hanging at around 190 with this real-time thing more closely matches the Dell Inspiron 8000 or the Canon Note Jet 3. Uh, dang, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm actually pretty impressed with that, I gotta say. That was not, I was expecting maybe a 5% boost or something from what I'd read, but that that's closer to, I don't know, I mean, I don't know, I don't know, math, man, math. So that means we've got to try out uh, Duke Nukem 3D here for sure. You know, to be honest, it's kind of hard to say. I, I think it is better. I'm gonna have to do a side-by-side -side here. Uh, take a look at this. I'm gonna be seeing this in post, of course. You know what, I do think it is a little better. I think it has improved some. I, I still wouldn't say it's as fast as I would uh, maybe expect for 66 megahertz AMD CPU, but then again, maybe it is, and, and my, my nostalgia is just 
getting in the way. No, I don't know. That That's definitely more playable. That is definitely more playable in this section. Uh, let, let's, do, let's give it the actual test here. I'm going to go into new game and uh, just try and play a little bit. Okay, let's see. What do I have? I have all this stuff on low. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's just... I will say, that is better. Is it like between 10 and 20% better? I don't know, maybe? Uh, either way, it's interesting to mess around with L2 cache and adding it to a 486 like this. I, it wasn't as groundbreaking as some of the commenters were saying it was gonna be like, oh, it's gonna make your god. But like, uh, I mean, obviously I'm gonna play it. I mean, I'm happier with it this way and happier to play things this way as opposed to it was previously, but again, this computer really wasn't, I mean, I didn't build it for Duke 3D. Well, that's pretty much it for installing cache on this thing. I'm curious what a difference would make if I installed 512K because even though the board itself says it supports 256, it looks like from the documentation I'm seeing on AOPEN's website and some other places that it might actually support 512. That would be interesting. I don't have any of those chips though, but that's something that I'm 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 just curious about as opposed to like really wanting to do to make my experience that much better. I'm really quite impressed with what 256K being added did. I mean, that was that was a pretty significant boost. It still doesn't make certain games ultimately like playable. Running Quake on this computer is still not going to be like <laughs> the best experience, although you could do it better than you could before. Running games from 1996 is not in the realm of what I want this to do. I just want this thing to look really cool with its turbo display and wood grain and whatnot, and also just sound and run a lot like the computers that I first played as a kid, which is a 46 DX266 Sound Blaster Pro 2.0. A little bit of cash, I guess, and you know, a VLB Visa compatible video card. Just, I'm happy with this thing and even happier with it now. And if you enjoyed this video on installing some nerdy stuff into some other nerdy stuff, then perhaps you'd like to see some other nerdy and geeky stuff here on LGR. That's a lot of what I do. So click these if you'd like to, or feel free to come back here every Monday and Friday to see other videos that I come up with. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed, and thank you very much for watching LGR.